Hello everyone, I'm Aytunç and I'll be presenting my Applied Electromagnetics course term project. The aim of the project is to design and build a cavity resonator. 1.1 GHz is chosen as the operating frequency. So why do we use cavity resonators? Well, to build resonators at lower frequencies, ordinary lumped elements like capacitors and inductors are used, but at microwave frequencies, these ordinary lumped elements must be extremely small to avoid high resistances in the circuit, which is basically impractical. Alternative for lumped elements are transmission lines, but at even higher frequencies, transmission lines exhibit high attenuation levels for TEM waves. So cavity resonators have smaller resistances since they have broad surface area, doesn't have the size issue, and also can achieve very high Q factors at even very high frequencies. TM110 is selected as the mode of operation. Side length frequency relation is as shown in the equation below. Since I have decided to make a cube shaped cavity resonator, all the side lengths are equal and the side length is equal to 19.3 cm to satisfy 1.1 GHz frequency level. Two monopole antennas are needed for the cavity first antenna to excite the cavity, in other words to fill the cavity with waves and the other one to detect the waves. Antenna length is quarter the wavelength so it results as 6.8 cm for 1.1 GHz but for safety margin I have initially cut a longer antenna and then tuned it by uh, clipping it or shortening it. So here are some tools that I have used to build the cavity. The measurements are done at Umram. There are two steps. First one is S11 measurement, in other words the return loss is measured. And the second one is resonating wave detection. So for the first measurement, uh, the requirement for return loss is being less than minus 10 dB. In other words, we have to have attenuation less than 10 dB. Uh, this is measured by only one port of the network analyzer. The excitation antenna is connected to the network analyzer and S11 is uh, measured. As you can see, the center frequency is uh, like 1.189 GHz having 10.1 dB attenuation. The resonating wave measurement is carried out by connecting both the excitation antenna and the receive antenna. We apply 1.8 GHz from the excitation antenna using the network analyzer. Then we measure the signal received on the receive antenna and observe the waveform on the oscilloscope. As you can see, uh, this is the signal fed into the cavity by the excitation antenna. And this is the received signal from the receive antenna on the oscilloscope. The expected frequency was 1.1 GHz, but the observed frequency was 1.19 GHz. This slight shift in the frequency corresponds to 8% error. I think this error is due to imperfections in the structure. Also, we apply 1.29 volt peak to peak and receive 0.56 volt peak to peak. Not a perfect result, but nevertheless, we have a resonating wave in the designated frequency inside our cavity. I think the voltage loss can be decreased by making sure not a single gap remains in the cavity. In my design, the top lid was sealed from the outside, so perhaps this may have an impact on the voltage loss.